Hello, I'm Anna Amelia from Northeast Animal Rights, and welcome to another one of our short videos on all things vegan. We don't often do vivisection as a theme for discussion. We usually keep it for World Day for Animals and Labs, which is in April. But there's a lot of publicity and work going on around Free the MBR Beagles at the moment, which also is throwing it at the spotlight, experiments and a whole host of other animals. So we wanted to help keep the momentum up and keep the subject in the public eye. First of all, let's talk about a couple of companies. <clears throat> LabCo is an American company who, if you go on their website, say they provide leading edge medical laboratory tests and services. They provide vital information to help doctors, hospitals and patients make clear and confident decisions. Their mission is to improve health and improve lives. That's from their website. <clears throat> they have a clinical research unit in, in Leeds where one of the things they do is test drugs meant for humans on humans and humans are paid for this research. But that's just one of the things they do there. They have an animal testing facility in Harrogate, which is often subject to protests. If you do a quick search on the internet, you'll see adverts for animal care assistance. Now, how paradoxical is that? Animal care assistance, assistance who care for animals in a laboratory. On their website, they say they treat animals they work with in biomedical research humanely. There's that word humanely, which we, we often hear in animal rights over and over again as a way, as an excuse, an apology for how they treat animals and justify what they do. So they treat animals um, humanely with care, compassion and respect. I can't think of anything more disrespectful than what they're doing to these animals. They adhere to strict standards of ethical conduct in providing for their welfare. Again, this welfare word, we use it, we, we hear this word again with humanely and welfare used over and over again as a way of justifying the, uh, the, the cruel things that we do to animals. They believe that taking good care of our animals is not only good science, but the right thing to do. So this is the right thing to do. You know, the right thing to do is they look after their animals, they, they care for them. You know, you kind of, you get the impression that these, you know, that they, <clears throat> they really spend a lot of time looking after these animals and the, the, the animals are paramount to what they do. Now, another company, MBR, Marshall Bioresources, are an American company. Again, another, another American company. The base at MBR Acres in Huntington is an animal breeding facility. If you go on their website, they have a hammer house of horrors shopping list of animals, some of whom are genetically modified. They even have their own little um, registered trademark um, symbol next to the, the type of animals they are. You can contact the company for, for prices for specific animals to be tortured. <clears throat> Marshall Bioresources, and again, this is from their website, is dedicated to maintaining high standards of animal welfare. Again, the welfare word. We greatly respect and appreciate the role our animals continue to play in the development of life-saving discoveries, medicines and treatments for humans and animals alike, as if the animals actually have a choice in this. Therefore, we believe our animals deserve the best possible treatment and care we can provide. Okay, let's just have a, have a think about that. The best possible treatment. OK, in an animal testing laboratory, OK, and an animal breeding facility. So breeding of animals for human gain is never right, whether it's breeding cats and dogs for sale as a private breeder, just exploiting animals, creating animals who do not need to be born when there are thousands in shelters. And I know that because I because I volunteer in a shelter and I see all these animals desperate for homes when people are constantly creating animals for money, for profit. The type of breeding that Beyond does it creates animals for cruel, outdated and frankly wicked experiments. Vivisection is, is always an emotive subject <clears throat> because all of us have lost loved ones to some cruel disease like cancer or Parkinson's. And when we've lost a loved one in this way, one of the first things we want to do is to contribute to a charity who researches the illness from which your loved one died to try and help other people so other people don't have to go through what you go through. Vivisection has always been by its very nature one of those subjects that everyday people find it hard to discuss. But one of the things that we, you know, everyone we speak to agrees on is that, you know, whether they agree with it, you know, if it's, it's necessary or not, and they agree with us as anti-vivisectionists, or they agree that, um, or they think that vivisection is necessary, they all agree that it's cruel. They also find the number of animals and the nature of the tests hard to stomach as well. At the moment, testing for cosmetics is banned, and I see a company, the company um, selling the products actually sells to a country where testing is required. But even in China, who is a massive market, was one of those requiring testing, has now lifted the requirement in law for imported general cosmetics to be tested on animals. But even this is fraught. If you look at the detail, there's a limited success because there's so many uh, hoops that companies have to go through in, in and outside of China to prove that they do not have to take part in animal testing. So there's a massive load of work to be done. For example, import of general cosmetics, general cosmetics, like your eyeshadows, your mascaras, your lipsticks, but there are other cosmetics, quite, which, which actually is quite a large variety of them, have to be tested. 
So now let's go down to MBR Bakers. <clears throat> MBR Acres, should I say, not Bakers. Let's go down to MBR Acres. Um, and let's talk about what Leanne and I saw when we went down to support the protest, which is down there in Huntington. It wasn't a very, very emotional day for us. Um, I mean, you, you know, this, this, this uh, protesters who are there, they're actually living on site there now. And obviously, um, you know, the, the site, the, um, the owners of the company who they are protesting in front of are trying everything they can um, to get rid of these because they don't want people shining the spotlight on their horrendous activities. It's quite an affluent area, Huntington. Um, it's hidden away. This, uh, this company is hidden away behind steel fences. It's off a main road, so it's, it's in the countryside, and you can drive past it quite easily many, many times and not even know what goes on behind there. It's a bit like when we go to Burridan, when we do the slaughterhouse, until we put the sign there, which says slaughterhouse, nobody actually would realise it's a slaughterhouse and the horrific stuff which goes on behind there. But if you look a little bit closer, and you can see there's, there's a massive camera there on the front door, on the front gate. It's a camera with video and audio recording. So they're not only recording what has been, been actually happening in terms of visual, they're also recording what has been said. There's a field at the side um, and the landowner um, gives the protesters permission to, to go up and down to get um, to get footage and to see what's going on on the site because it's, a, it's directly adjacent to the site. We were taken down there by one of the protesters there and you can hear the dog, dogs barking and howling. They're living in kind of um, steel hangars, a bit like, you know, what you see aeroplanes in, but on a smaller version. Now, let's assume that within these hangars, that every, the women of every dog is needed, you know, is, is heeded and um, and you know, and the, the dogs are pampered, they're fed, they're cared for and played with. But we know that's not true. We know that's not the case. We have undercover footage from inside uh, Huntington and you, you can get that from the Free, free the MBR um, Beagles um, social media and also the, uh, the Camp Beagle um, social media as well. Now, Free the MBR uh, Beagles has been going on for quite some time. They have been there for, for you know, for a number of years trying to, um, to, to raise public awareness about these be Beagles and vivisection in general. So what actually goes on in there? So the female dogs in there are, in, are repeatedly impregnated. They give birth to the babies and have the babies removed as quickly as possible so the training process can begin. Two of the things that these baby animals are trained to do is to accept wearing a mask, which will then send toxic fumes into their airways when they're at the, the testing facility, and to hold up a paw to accept an injection. How cruel and cynical and callous do you have to be to, to, to actually have to train animals to do that? Look at the dog next to you in your room, or in your own house, or your cat's next to it. How cruel and cynical and just barbaric would you have to be? And what kind of like mindset do you have to have to be able to do that to animals, innocent animals who are trusting you? These dogs, the beagles, are, are picked because they're docile, because they don't fight back, they're small and easy to handle and they're cheap to house. The, the average lifespan of one of these dogs is 12 to 15 years. These puppies are removed from the breeding facility at 16 weeks old. They're loaded into crates and removed by plain white vans with no markings on them. We know now that these vans are owned by a company called Impex, who are based in Thropston, Northamptonshire. Now, when we were there on the day, um, it was, you know, we, we didn't know really what to expect. Um, it was relatively, it was a quiet in terms of protesters available there. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a, it was, I'm kind of thinking back now and it's, it's, I feel quite choked thinking about it because the smells and the sounds, you can hear the dogs barking all the time. Um, you know, people are, are sort of driving past, um, tooting the horns, so showing so, uh, support for you. Um, and obviously there's a big camaraderie between the, the protesters as well. Now, um, the, um, the vans, the first thing we know of is, uh, is that, the, that the animals are going to be removed, is that the, pre the police presence, okay? So you literally go from no police presence at all to someone, you know, to all of the police just suddenly arriving um, and literally just um, just swooping on the, the gate, the gateway. And when we were there, it was literally a two to one presence. So two police officers to one member of member of the protest. So if I was a Cambridge taxpayer, um, I I'd be very concerned about my taxes being used to support an American company, which is carrying out this hideous activity. Now, this is not a rant about, about the police. Um, they are protecting those who currently operate within the law, as they would have to protect us if, if we, when we operate within the law. So this is at the moment, the law happens to be on the side of the animal abusers, but it won't always be that way. So what is a law? A law is a set of rules or a rule which, which is dependent on what is deemed acceptable or unacceptable in a specific time in history. It was deemed at one time to be unacceptable for women to vote in the UK. It was deemed acceptable to fox hunt, to attend bear baiting and cockfighting. The law said that wild animals could perform in circuses, and the law said it was acceptable to have fur farms in this country. But all of these laws have changed due to the will of the people. So never underestimate that the power that you have is one single person. 
you know, whether it is buying cruelty-free product and creating a demand in the market for cruelty-free products, whether it's signing petition and sharing it or contacting your MP, it all helps. Laws can and should be changed to improve the life of, lives of all beings, not just humans, all beings. So these dogs that we saw being removed on the day that we were, we were there will all now be dead. These little babies, you know, who were we heard in the in the vans when they were dr driving away, <clears throat> when they were barking, you know, a mixture of excitement and, and being a, bit, a little bit scared. They weren't sure what was happening to them. They were being different, different to a testing facility. They have been tortured for 90 days with poisonous substances fed through a tube into their stomach, or injected directly into their bloodstreams. They're basically being slowly poisoned to death. And after they're killed, their organs are removed, <clears throat> and the young bodies are disposed of just like rubbish. There's an increasing scientific body of opinion and, and evidence now that all of this testing is, is unnecessary. The science behind these tests are, are being more openly and more frequently questioned. Animals have sentence like humans. We know that, we know that for fact, and the law is now recognizing that. Um, so sentence is where they have the, the capacity to feel pain, suffering, um, <clears throat> love, you know, new relationships have the same sort of like needs for shelter and food and care that we have. Um, but we have to remember that their bodies are very, very different. We are testing a drugs for, for humans on mice. Mice are, are considerably different, as are rats, as are dogs. <clears throat> By the very nature, they are a different species. Again, a proven medical fact, nine out of 10 tests on animals fail. Nine out of 10, 90%. If you were going in for an operation and being asked to take a medicine, which had a 90% failure rate, would you take the operation or would you take the medicine? I certainly wouldn't. If I wanted to have an operation, I, wanted, I would want it to have a high, high success rate than a 90% failure <clears throat> chance. One of the specific reasons that, um, that bodies like universities get, get licenses for performing animal testing is that all avenue, other avenues have been exhausted. This is actually uh, the case right across all the river section. They have to be able to, for, for their license for their specific test, they have to prove that it can't be done in other, in other ways. But then you have multiple universities performing multiple tests, the same tests, because they're following very similar curriculums, you know, med medicine in one, um, one university, say Manchester, is very similar to a university in Leeds, which is very similar to a university in Newcastle. So the, co the core of their curriculum is very similar. So they, are, they will be pr um, producing very similar testing um, tests for, uh, on animals. <clears throat> and we know that Newcastle um, in, our, in the Northeast is one of the highest, um, you know, has a, has a massive amount of animal testing and animals on site as well. So how, when all of these universities are, 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 um, are doing similar tests, how can they say, that this is really, really um, a way they can prove that, that all other animal testing uh, or other animal routes have been exhausted. We have the technology to build space stations to put men and women on the moon, but we don't have the, the technology to replace animal testing. Again, that's crazy, absolutely crazy. It really, really is. We can do absolutely all sorts, you know. We can send robots into, um, to, you know, to defuse bombs. <clears throat> I was watching this on um, on Trigger Point the other day, and I was fascinated with how technology has is so so far advanced, but we can't replace animals <clears throat> in tests. But actually, we can. We know we can. One of the reasons in favour of animal testing has, is that it's always been done this way, but it hasn't. River section has, has been a massive industry only in the twentieth and twenty first century. On the scale that's being done now, it's just a recent event. OK, it's a multi billion dollar industry. So this is actually the main reason for animal testing. You know, the, the money created in the, in the animal breeding, the money in the animal testing, the grants to get, you know, it's absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> if the question is, if animal testing was outlawed tomorrow, all of these companies would very quickly find alternatives with the current technology available and all of the money they have at their disposal. So how can you help? Well, first of all, you can buy cruelty-free products, as I mentioned, create the, uh, the market demand for them. You can contact your MP and tell them that river section is a flawed science and you do not support it, and you want them to, to, use, to, um, to use your voice to, to be raised in Parliament. If you don't know how, who your MP is, go on, uh, Google, find your MP, and, um, and that will come up with, um, if you put your postcode in, it'll tell you the name of your MP and also their contact details. Ask them to support EDM175, Early Day Motion 175, which is a, a motion in Parliament, against vivisection. Sign in and share Peter Egan's parliamentary petition. The number is 602607. And again, if you go on to Google Parliament, sorry, if you go to Google and Google Parliament petition and Peter Egan, it comes up, but it's 602607 as a parliamentary petition. 
support and follow Free the MBR Beagles for Life on Earth, which is um, which has um, Ricky Gervais and uh, Peter Regan as their main supporters. Uh, Vivisection Exposed and follow what happens in Camp Beagle with their regular updates. But there are many Vivisection charities in, in the UK, um, so please support them. Like Cruelty Free International, they're the ones, they're one of the ones who also tells you uh, which uh, companies test animals and which ones are, um, which ones don't. Um, and Animal Aid as well, they have a massive long list of, uh, of, of charities who don't test animals and who, who do. So for every charity that you want to support, there's actually another one who doesn't test animals who you can equally support. But keep talking about animal experiments and keep the subject in the public eye. People with power will change this law. The animals and every single, single one of you, can you can change the law to speak for them. So it's really, really important that we do this. It's a bit like veganism. We mainstream veganism by constantly talking about it, you know, keeping that word out there, keeping veganism, keeping uh, the word vegan out there. But we need to do the same with vivisection. Vivisection is one of those horrific um Perfect activities which don't, which doesn't need to happen, which can be replaced. There are alternatives out there, and we need to make sure that we keep speaking for these animals, the beagles that we saw, that Leanne and I saw, and who we, who our stomachs just turned when we saw them coming out, when we heard them coming out, um, you know, out of the out of the vans, out of the um, the facility into the vans, knowing where they were going to go to certain torture and to definite death very very shortly after that. These beautiful animals who all of us have, you know, we have very similar animals in our homes and who don't deserve these fates. So please, please, please keep speaking out for these animals. So that's all for me today. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you found that interesting. Um, please follow our work. If you like our work, support us by following us on, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, on, uh, on Twitter, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is Anna Amelia from Northeast Animal Rights signing off now and saying thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day. Thank <laughs> you.